she's missed us and we've missed her. We can finally bring her home. It's April 1st and this is not April Fools. It's a beautiful day. Well, it's getting close to that time of the year. Time to get her out and get her ready for the new camping season. So we spent some time over the last few months checking out some of the camping shows. We went to the Outdoor Adventure Show, the Toronto Spring Camping and RV Kitchener, Show. Kitchener Army Show. And we did that one too. And uh, that helped us get our camping fix in. And now we're ready to get yes. going to actually camping. There's our baby. This year, Ben and I got to meet so many of you at the RV shows. We were at the Toronto and Kitchener RV shows. We did a couple meet and greets and two presentations that went excellent. We met so many great people and heard so many good camping stories. Um, the Toronto show, we were overwhelmed with the turnout for our presentation. We uh, ended up filling up a, a huge area. We had a couple hundred people for it. It was incredible. The Kitchener show was a lot smaller than the Toronto show. Our presentation was at the very end of the final day of the show, which wasn't great in the last time slot, but we still had an impressive turnout of, five, of 50 to 60 people. Um, we still can't believe that you guys want to come and watch us talk. Okay. Our presentation at both shows was how we started our camping journey and how we got into YouTube. For those of you that missed our presentations at the shows, we recorded the Kitchener one. And here it is. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello, welcome. I'm hoping you can all hear us okay? Yes, yeah, no so if, microphone I, if or anything. my voice starts fading, just wave your arm and I'll... She sometimes goes down to a whisper. Yeah. Um, okay, so my name is Ben Coles. And I'm Cheryl. And uh, we have a YouTube channel called Camping with the Coles. Um, show of hands here, who's seen any of our videos? <laughs> All right. Well, that's pretty good. Show of hands, who hasn't seen our videos? Yeah, Pete in the back. He's appeared in them. Oh, well, we've got a couple there, so that's good. Okay, as many of you know, our YouTube channel is uh, camping and RV based. Uh, it's not specifically RV related. Uh, but we do happen to have a 25 foot travel trailer, so we do some uh, RV based stuff too. Um, our main content are park reviews of Ontario Provincial Parks. We also do uh, the odd national park, a um, couple conservation areas, and we're going to spread out over the next little while and maybe do some state parks and things like that. <laughs> They're for all forms of camping from tenting on up. We also uh, do videos on RV maintenance updates, modifications, gear reviews, um, things like our top 10 parks, uh, things like camping etiquette. Um, when arriving and setting up at your campsite, it's probably a good idea to use your cell phone or walkie-talkies to communicate between the driver and the backer runner so you're not hollering, especially if it's like 11, 12 o'clock at night. All right, Ben, turn to the right, turn to the left. <laughs> And we've also done uh, a video on ticks and tick prevention because um, ticks are very prevalent in uh, parks in Ontario. So we did uh, a video on that. <laughs> Those ticks are scary things. <laughs> Uh, basically anything camping and RV related is what our channel is about. Uh, we started the channel in 2019. Since then we've done about 125 videos and a little over 50 of them are park reviews. And let's have a look at what we did in uh, 2023. This is just last year. 12,696 kilometers traveled, 81 nights camped, 30 parks and one Cracker Barrel. Two out of province camping road trips, 13 park review videos, five 
camping road trip videos and 17 other camping and RV related videos. That was our 2023 by the numbers. Alrighty, we also did a four park series on campsite trailer tours where we toured our friends trailers. Um, you got to see the trailers when they were camping, actual lived in trailers, not at what you see in the RV show, empty trailers. Um, so we got to show you some storage solutions and modifications, etc. <clears throat> We've got them up there. Yes. So how many here are interested in getting an RV for the first time? Oh, I got a few hands. Oh, good. <laughs> this is the right place to come. Everything's under one roof. You get to see everything from an, uh, beds off the ground, just basic pop-up campers up to your rock and roll, rock star, class A motorhomes. Um, or that nice $220,000 Brinkley. Brinkley. Have you seen yeah. that Brinkley? Oh, it's nice. There's practically something for everyone here. You'll get a lot of, a lot of ideas about what you like and what you don't like. Um, you just need to do your research and here is a good start. So neither of us came from camping families. Um, we just did cottages at Sabo Beach and Wasaga Beach growing up and road trips included uh, taking over motels that had, they had to have a TV and they had to have a pool. That was the requirements for that for us. Yep. And growing up for me, again, no camping at all. I started my camping journey in uh, when I was 16 years old. I became a camp counselor for the Big Brother camp. And uh, I found the best way to learn something is to have to teach it. So for three summers, I taught canoeing, hiking, camping, and did a lot of uh, backcountry camping during that time. Yes, and um, I started my camping journey when we met. We were both 18 in high school. Um, we did some, like you said, backcountry canoe trips together, and then I worked at the same Big Brother camp that Ben did. I was camp nurse for about three, three seasons. Not so, when I was there, though. No, no, we were there different times. We did a few backcountry canoe trips in Algonquin, Killarney, Esker Lakes, Six Mile Lakes, and I can't remember where else we were. The first time we went car camping was at McGregor Point. Our friends invited us to join them. So we packed as we did, as we only knew how at backcountry camp. We had our uh, green canvas backpacks. Our food was in a barrel. We threw it in the back of Ben's little CRX and off we went. So those of you that know how we pack now can really appreciate this. <laughs> that was everything in that little car for a seven day camping trip. Two canoe packs and a food barrel. Mind you, I did still overpack the food. <laughs> yes. Just in case. Just in case. Um, so we unpacked and set up camp, and we watched in awe as our friends did their setups. They were putting um, pillows in their tents. Mm -hmm. We never thought of using pillows. We just put our clothes in a, like a fleece sweater and slept on that. Mm -hmm. um, they were bringing lawn chairs. We just would sit on rocks. But there was a picnic table. At least we could sit at that. Um, one guy had a full propane barbecue strapped in the back of his pickup. And then they brought out coolers with ice and beer. <laughs> All we had was our water bottles and tang crystals. Remember that when you were camping? So that was... We didn't know how to do any other type of camping. Yeah. We always it's did backcountry. It's all foreign to us. Yeah, it was pretty funny back then. It was blowing our minds. When I saw the cooler come out with ice in it and beer, I thought, oh my gosh. I think that's what transitioned us over. I right? just said lukewarm water with drink crystals in it. Yes. From then on, we did a mixture of backcountry camping and car camping. We got married, had three kids, and still did that mixture of camping, always sleeping in tents. Our equipment list became bigger and bigger as we enjoyed more comfort over time. But still during that time from uh, about 1999 to 2010, uh, I volunteered with high school groups and I'd do backcountry camping trips. So twice a year, I'd be going with high school groups uh, in Killarney, Algonquin, a bunch of other places doing these backcountry trips. So I, I really enjoyed doing that for about 11 years I did that. And it kept me into the backcountry side of things. Um, we camped with a big group of friends and at McGregor Point there was a group camping area. We would camp with 12 adults and 18 kids and it was just a ride. The kids would just play and run and have a great old time. Right Allie? You remember? Yes. That's our daughter uh, right our there. Our daughter behind the camera there. <laughs> <laughs> um, where am I here? We all started off in tents and over time some of our friends moved up to pop-ups. I tried to convince Ben to get a trailer, but he always said he was happy sleeping in a tent. But in 2010, I finally convinced him to get a trailer. Some of our friends had a trailer and they showed us some pictures of a, of a trip they did in the uh, US Northeast. I convinced Ben that a trailer didn't have to replace tent camping. It 
would replace the hotels we were staying at when we did our usual road trips. Places to Virginia Beach, Galveston, Myrtle Beach, etc. We bought a used six-year-old hybrid trailer, a StarCraft Travel Star 19CK. And by the way, a couple months after getting the trailer, I went on one of the uh, backcountry hiking trips with the high school group. We were in Algonquin Park. It was the middle of October. Um, we were there for three nights. It rained the whole time. It was cold. The last night, uh, I'm standing around what's supposed to be the fire, but it's an empty, cold, wet fire pit. There is no dry wood anywhere. The rain slowed down for a little bit and it turned into sleet. And it was coming at us from the side. And I'm standing there in every layer of clothing and my rain gear on top. And I'm just looking down at this cold fire pit. And I'm thinking, what am I doing? I got a trailer now. <laughs> you know, I got, I got a furnace in my trailer. I could be nice and warm. I could be sitting on the couch, watching TV, eating microwave popcorn, nice and dry in my trailer. And that was a turning point for me, and uh, that, was the, that was the last night I slept in a tent. I couldn't do it anymore. I, uh, I bought, completely bought into the RV lifestyle. I just couldn't do backcountry anymore. That's my princess. <laughs> yeah, that's me. Uh, it's funny, I told that story. Uh, we were being interviewed uh, for the Canoe Hound Outdoor yes. Adventure Show, and I told that story. And uh, a buddy of mine, Rob, he called me up the next day, and he says, oh, I saw the... The show, he did a great job, and he says, but I can't believe that you announced to the entire world the moment you became a wussy. <laughs> he might not have said wussy, it might have just rhymed with it, but you get the idea. <laughs> Once you own an RV, the learning begins. And when I talk about RVs, I'm talking about all these types of things, pop-ups, uh, hybrids, regular travel trailers, fifth wheels, class A's, B's, C's, everything, anything you see at the show here, they're all RVs. So I've learned that doing maintenance on your RV um, is really important. Uh, if you can just be a little bit handy, you're going to save yourself a lot of time, a lot of money, and a lot of aggravation. Uh, when we got our trailer, uh, it was used, our uh, hybrid, it was used the first uh, time we went camping in it, we went to Pinery. And uh, it, uh, it rained, and then it was raining inside the trailer. So it leaked, and uh, I didn't have a way to get on the roof, but I managed to throw a tarp over it for that trip. When we got home, I went up on the roof, found cracked caulking, and figured out how to fix that. So we didn't know anything before we, we had the trailer. So we fixed that. The next summer, I noticed the floor was getting a little soft. Right in the main area that you walk, right by the dinette, it was getting a little soft. When you took it out of storage the next year, the floor was so soft that I thought I could have put my foot through it. Like, it was just really soft. I, I think that probably when we bought it, it already had that leak and the floor was already starting to go then. And maybe that's why the guy sold it. But, uh, so we had a problem. Buyer beware. So I took it to uh, an RV dealership uh, nearby and uh, they looked at it. They said, yeah, we need to put a whole new floor in. Um, and this was, 2013 or so, and uh, he's talking 4000 to 4500 dollars. And our trailer only cost like eight thousand dollars, so it was an expensive uh, proposition. And this was in May, and he said, uh, "Yeah, we can we can do it, but not until the off season. So not until winter. So we'd have to go the whole summer that way." No. <laughs> Do you have something to say there? Oh, <laughs> this, was, this happened a, just a couple weeks before, well, maybe it was three weeks before our first trip of the season, so I was in major panic mode, stressing yep. out. We have to get this fixed. So I went to a couple different dealerships, and they both told me the same thing. Off-season, $4,000, $4,500. Mm -hmm. So then I was, I was telling my buddy who I work with about this, and uh, he said, did they tell you how they'd fix it? And I said, yeah, they kind of explained it. And he goes, we'll do it. I'm like, what do you mean we'll do it? He says, we're going to do it. <laughs> and I, there's no way I would have attempted this. But luckily, I have a very handy friend who happens to be right there. <laughs> Wave, Pete. There we go. And uh, He's the good thing be everybody's is, favorite friend yeah. now. <laughs> he can fix stuff on the roof without a ladder, too, so that's handy. But uh, so he said, we can do it. And uh, so we decided we're going to try to do it. And that journey, I learned so much about, uh, about our trailer and travel trailer, trailers in general. 
So we had to take out the dinette, we had to take out the jackknife sofa, we had to uh, uh, take out the lower kitchen cupboards, all that sort of stuff, we had, we had to take it out. Uh, we peeled back the vinyl or linoleum, whatever you want to call it, and you could see it was all wet under there. I had to let it dry out uh, every day for a week. At the nighttime, we'd put a dehumidifier in it, and then we had to uh, put it all back together. Now, it was handy when you have a very tiny person, my daughter, there and uh, she went in the little opening and she unscrewed that wall there so that we could uh, remove that wall to get the floor off. So it was a big job but I learned about the uh, electrical system because we put uh, an extra outlet in there. I learned about the plumbing because now that the floor was a little bit higher I had to change the plumbing from the sink. Um, I learned about the propane system because we crimped a uh, accidentally crimped the, uh, the copper pipe to the, for the propane. Um, yeah, I learned about so many of the systems with the trailer. And I had another friend who uh, actually went underneath in that really, uh, the main traveled area. There's no structure on the trailer there. So he went underneath with a steel beam and put a steel beam under there and bolted it in. So that was the strongest part in the trailer. Um, I, we did it all. And instead of $4,500, it was $450, a case of beer, and a bottle of scotch. <laughs> Pete likes scotch. <laughs> All and we were lucky this because this was a hybrid. It was easy to get everything out because we could just open up one end, one of the tip outs, to get everything out. Because if it wasn't a hybrid, we wouldn't have been able to get everything out the door. It just wouldn't have fit. So this was very handy that we were lucky that it was a hybrid. But uh, then it was all fixed. Everything was good again. And... Uh, Mm -hmm. That trailer was great. We sold it, uh, loved it. We in loved 2017, it. but yeah. Uh, yeah, we loved that trailer. Okay, so the biggest thing you have to protect yourself, protect the trailer from is water, in my opinion. Because you let a little water in there, it goes around the walls, it goes down on the floor, it can cause a ton of damage. And uh, like for storage, if you're storing it outside in the wintertime, then you've got the sun beating on the uh, roof the whole time and it cracks the caulking, which now causes a water problem. So uh, I check my seams on the walls and the caulking on the roof three times a year. I check it when I take it out of storage in the middle of the season and when I put it back in storage. Because uh, I've seen how much work it is and how difficult it is, and I don't think Pete's willing to do another <laughs> floor with me. So uh, yeah, it's something that I'm really obsessive about, uh, making sure the caulking is all good and uh, protecting it from water damage. So I'm just going to mention a few examples of things to consider before you get your travel trailer. One of the main thing is, is your tow vehicle capable of towing it? A lot of times dealers won't tell you that. They'll say, oh, it's fine, it's fine, when it isn't. You have to know what your tow vehicle is capable of towing. Um, remember, it's not just towing an empty trailer, but you're t um, towing full trailer full of gear, whatever you carry in your tow vehicle as well. The occupants you tow, toys like bikes, kayaks, canoes, actually the bike rack itself, um, your weight distribution hitch, um, food, drinks, dishes, clothing, all that stuff it adds up. Um, number two, where are you going to store your travel trailer during the season and off season and what is the cost involved with storing it? Number three, insurance for your trailer. You never know what's going to happen. Fire, theft, a tree falling on it, or a car crash. Some insurance companies require additional auto insurance plus additional home insurance. Some have insurance specific to RVs. You'll have to look into that. Next, should I get roadside assistance? This is something new that we just came across because as our vehicles are getting older, we realize they're getting crabby and they like to break down. So um, you don't want to be out in the middle of nowhere and have either your truck break down or your trailer break down and just knowing that the towing company can only take your vehicle and you didn't have insurance on your trailer as well. Um, insurance or, uh, or roadside assistance. Roadside assistance, sorry, roadside yeah. assistance, yes. Um, there will be additional costs with maintenance for your RV and there's additional uh, gear you'll need such as leveling box, chocks, extension cords, adapters for 15 amp, 30 amp and 50 amp, water hoses, filters, water regular, surge protector, black tank chemicals, dump hoses, just to name a few. So in 2017, we bought the trailer that we have right now. Yeah. It's a uh, 2017 Coachman Freedom Express 254 DSX. 
Um, we first saw this trailer at the Toronto RV show, the 2013 model of it, at the Toronto RV show, and it became our dream trailer. Um, and to me, that's what it was. It was a dream. I didn't think I was ever going to own this trailer. This is my dream trailer. And every year, we'd go to the Kitchener show and we'd go to the Toronto show and we'd be going, I wonder if the, the 254 DSX is going to be there. And we're all excited about it. And we'd get to the show and we'd say, it's here. And we'd go and sit in it and spend a lot of time in it. And then people would come and look at it and Cheryl would be giving them a tour of it because <laughs> I researched saying, oh, look how this a lot is. of videos on yeah, it. She loved it. Um, <clears throat> And then uh, I, I didn't think we were ever going to get it, um, but... I was determined to get it. It was going to happen. <laughs> yeah. So there we were in 2017. Um, it was just... Uh, I retired in 2017, and it was just uh, a couple of months before my retirement. And we happened to be driving past a dealership that we knew had the, the Coachman Freedom Express. And Cheryl said, let's just check to see if they have the 254 DSX. And I'm like... Why? Why do we want to check? Like, we know what it looks like. We know we love it. Why do you want to check? And she says, well, I just want to go in and have a look. Well, it's just like, like going to the Humane Society to look at puppies. We're just going to look. Yeah, we're just going to look, and then you come home with a puppy. And we came home with two puppies on two separate occasions, too. <laughs> that's, yeah. where, that's where we got jacks. I said, okay, we'll go have a look. So we got out. We were looking around at all the Freedom Express and couldn't find it. And the salesman comes out, asks if he can help. And I said, yeah, I'm looking for the 254 DSX. And he goes, oh, the one with the tip out on the back. I said, yeah, that's the one. He goes, oh, it's right over there in the clearance section. Like, well, Cheryl's, yeah, Cheryl's doing one of these. So Cheryl immediately turned into a salesman's dream <laughs> and my nightmare. Because, and then the guy says, oh, yeah, well, we ask, why is it in the clearance section? He goes, well, actually, they stopped making this model. 2017 is the last year for it. And uh, it, this is the last one in Canada. And so Cheryl's yeah, like, oh my gosh, right? and we're walking over towards it, and I got my phone out, and I'm going, yeah, salesman, <laughs> last one in Canada, sure, and I'm <laughs> checking it here and going, yeah, they stopped making it, sure, and I'm looking, and he was right, this is the last one in Canada, and it's the last model year. And then we go into the trailer, and instead of the salesman showing us around, Cheryl's showing the salesman everything. <laughs> and then she's saying, oh, Ben, oh, Ben, we have to get it. The price is so good. This is before we ever talked price. The price is so good. We have to get it. And she's, like, begging me in front of the salesman. And the salesman just has a big smile on his face. He doesn't, doesn't have to say a word. So, but fortunately, I, I held fast. We weren't getting it, and uh, we walked out of that dealership. But I was emailing them back and forth. <laughs> yeah, she was doing that. And then a few days later, we talked to some friends. Pete and Connie suggested we, get, we buy it. Um, and Cheryl's puppy dog eyes looking at me, and I'm like, fine. So we ended up going and getting that trailer. It's your retirement gift. Yeah, it's my retirement gift. For me. Debt. <laughs> Um, so we, uh, we haven't seen a trailer uh, since that we like nearly as much as ours. And mm -hmm. we keep on going to the RV shows, and Cheryl's still online yeah, all the time. almost every day watching Just videos and <laughs> checking things out. And we still haven't found one as much as we like as ours. So I'm very happy for that because that saves me money. <laughs> I'm afraid we're going to find one that is going to be nicer, and then she's going to be all over me for it. But. She wants the Brinkley. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the Brinkley. Oh, I like that one. What makes it so special? What's that? What, what makes it so special? Our, our trailer? Yeah. The layout of it. And it's open concept, and we have the extra bedding. It's a tip out, and it doesn't weigh any extra, like if you had bunk beds. Um, I just, it's got a ton of storage. It doesn't have, it's, the bedroom's not closed off because I'm claustrophobic, so I like it to be more wide open. Um, yeah, it's nice when you're in bed. There's no wall or anything, and it's just like a great big bedroom then. It's really nice. And mm -hmm. it's usually just the two of us, but, but when they, if any kids adults. come, we just drop the tip out here, and the kids can go in there. And they tend to sleep in really long, <laughs> and it doesn't affect us at all in any way because we have the whole rest of the trailer, you know, we just... The tip out is like its own little room. And I liked it because the uh, roof of it was arched a bit so the water could kind of drain off. It had yeah, a black, last one it yeah. would do a little pooling on the roof. It had a black water flush, or it has a black water flush. Um, what were some other things? The, the uh, sofa is a tri-fold sofa for an extra bed. Um, <coughs> yeah, so it was just all those things. And it's the, for the size of that trailer, it was lightweight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
which we have to consider when we have our tow vehicle, right? <laughs> and the big thing too with the slide, um, it, if you close the slide, it's fully functional. It's like a regular travel trailer. So if we pull into a, a Walmart or a Cracker Barrel or something like that, where you're not supposed to open up your slides, it's just a fully functional travel trailer. You can look at a lot of them here and they show them with the slides open, but you really want to have a look when the slides are closed. Yeah, if it's closed and you pull over and you have to use the bathroom, you can't get to it because the slide yeah, is closed. You can't get to the bathroom or you can't get to the bedroom if yeah. it's closed. So I like it to be totally accessible. So we wanted to try more parks, so we started doing some research on the web, Facebook, and YouTube. We would watch YouTube videos of different parks and some of the videos would say it's a review of the park. And we watched the videos and it would be something like people's kids playing at the beach or a video of people having dinner at a campsite. They never gave us any details specifically to that park. <laughs> so, so this is why we decided to start our YouTube videos. Uh, I thought it would be a, a good idea to try to do park reviews to help other people out because we're looking all the time and we have to watch like 20 videos just to get an idea of what a park is like, try to piece them together. So I thought we should try doing some park review videos. Um, I had done some very basic editing of home movies in the past. Once I retired, I had a little bit more time, and I did some research on it, found out you know, what do the professionals use for editing videos, and then I taught myself how to do that with Premiere Pro. So uh, I hope as you see the progression of the videos from season one to up to season six now, that it, it has gotten a little better because I'm learning the whole time. And uh, it's a very comprehensive, very detailed program. So uh, it's taken a little bit of time. Uh, in 2019 then, we started doing our park reviews. Uh, they were pretty basic that, back then. We just were uh, thinking, here's what people want to see. It was just our idea of what people wanted to see. Uh, yeah, over time as people commented, they made suggestions. So if you guys don't see anything that you feel we need to do more, just let us, send us a message and we'll do our best to um, record that. Um, Things that people have provided us are playground, they like, if they have kids they want to see more about playgrounds, comfort stations, more campsites, hiking, cycling, water sports, dog beaches, and the big thing now, cell phone service. <clears throat> and what's near and dear to my heart, anybody? It's Cheryl's Lou Review, Lou Review, let's all talk about Lou's. Don't ask Ben, don't ask Jack, ask Cheryl. Cheryl's Lou Review. So with, every, with a lot of people asking us to put extra content into it, and we'd go, yeah, that makes sense. People want to know that. So we'd put more content into it. So our videos went from about 15 minutes to about half an hour, and I kept on trying to get them down shorter and shorter. Then I finally kind of gave up with that. They, they end up being about half an hour now. Um, but originally good, I was trying to do them about 20 minutes. But what's good is we have our videos, they are all chaptered, so if there's something you want to skip past, you can. Yeah, like when we drive <laughs> around and we look at all the campsites, some people don't care to see all the campsites. Well, just skip to the next chapter and you can go to, go to what you want to see. Mm -hmm. um, so like season one and two, not as detailed as our later seasons. By season three, I think we were getting our stride. Uh, season four and five, I think we were there. Um, and now we're revisiting some of the parks we did in our first two seasons just to make them a little more comprehensive. Plus our first two seasons were really uh, a lot of the parks that we had done a lot of times in the past. We're getting a lot of good feedback from people like you telling us that you're liking our content and making suggestions, so that is awesome. Uh, we read every comment on YouTube, everything that you send, Facebook, Instagram, whatever, we read it all and we respond to everything if it requires a response, which most do, but yeah. So uh, we, it, it really has helped us become better at what we're doing by getting your feedback, so that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Mike Ritchie, are you here? Mike <laughs> Ritchie, hand up. There he is. Up. Okay. Happy birthday, Happy Mike. Happy birthday, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for coming. This is the best way to spend your birthday, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get a new trailer? No, but we looked at one. Oh, okay. okay. Perfect. <laughs> Good. <laughs> awesome. Do you want to do a selfie? Is everybody up for a selfie? Yeah. If, you, if don't, you don't want to be in, you can face. hide your face. I'm just going to take a couple shots here, real quick. Okay, well, I guess that's it then. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Yes, thank you. Um, thanks. 
very shortly we'll be coming out with a video sharing with you where we're going in season six can't wait to get started we'll see you next time happy, happy camp. camping <laughs>